and help, welcome to the Happy Hook class, which is called the TAT class. Um, any of you that have watched any of my videos on YouTube or been involved in my hook group or forum, which I, I don't even consider that my hook group or my forum, that's our forum because everybody contributes with their understanding and their examples and their problems and things like that. And it helps us all grow more. And while this is a class that I'm going to present, um, this is not the know-all. This is not that I have all the answers. But I do believe that I have come up with a foundational understanding that will help you find all the answers. Where you're going to learn to have tact when it comes to approaching a horse's foot, understanding a horse's foot, and influencing the horse's foot. Now, the reason that I have a boot up here, okay, is um, I in this class I'm going to do a lot of analogies um, because that will really help your understanding. And uh, what I'm going to present to you is a concept that's based on what is called a, a science of structural engineering. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about anatomy and that kind of stuff, and you are going to learn about the anatomy, but you're going to learn it from the standpoint of what is called structural engineering. Now, yeah, that sounds like a big fancy word and oh no, but what you're going to find out is that is that you already know about structural engineering. Um, we're going to go over some of the principles of structural engineering, and you're going to find out that a lot of times men just use big fancy words so that um, they can basically hide from you the fact that they don't know any more than you do when it comes right down to it. And so that way, because they use all these big words uh, to intimidate you, then uh, you always think that you have to come to them for every little bit of knowledge, you know, because they have the degrees and they know the big words, Okay, and what you're going to find out is that uh, structural engineering principles are all around you. You apply them. You deal with it every day of your life. It's just common knowledge, common sense, and we're going to apply this to the foot of the horse. Now, before I get in, we're going to, we are going to go through the parts of the anatomy, but what I'm wanting you to see is is not just understand the different parts of the anatomy of the internal foot and the external capsule, but also how this whole unit fits together. And like my goal for me is to understand this foot so well that uh, it is a working 3D image in my head and that I have a complete and full understanding of how each part affects the other part. And though it's kind of like tying your shoes, though, um, when you were little and you first were taught to tie your shoes, boy, it sure seemed hard, didn't it? You had to really think about it. Now you just do it without even realizing it. And I'm finding that this can be the same way with looking at the horse's foot. You know, uh, once you start applying these principles and see the truth of them, the logic, the common sense, You'll be able to look at a foot, and at first, you know, you're going to have to study and, and see it all fit together, what's wrong or what's right with that foot. But eventually, sooner than not, because what I'm going to set forth to you is simple, if not easy, eventually, you'll just be able to look and know, see? And so... Um, that's what we're going to do here in this class. We're going to present um, a concept, okay? Not the all-in-all -all answer, but a concept that I believe will lay a foundation for you that you can build on yourself, you know, because once the foundation is correct and strong, then what you build on it will fit, it will last, it will hold together in your understanding. And so the name of this class is Understanding the True Foot of 
the horse, the true foot. Okay, now the reason I say that is because, uh, what is a true foot? If you get on net, you Google, and you look at all kinds of different hoof pictures, you're going to see a form here that it, it is a hundred different ways. You know, how do you know what the true foot of the horse is? And here's the thing. When you trim whatever image you have in your mind of what the foot is supposed to be, that is what it winds up being in your head. And so it can be totally messed up. Uh, and what I mean by that is the capsule is really not form-fitting to this internal foot. It can be totally messed up. But because your image is not correct, that's in your mind, um, then you're not going to see it. You know, I was just the other day looking back at some old trim pictures. And frankly, I was horrified because I remember how I thought when I looked at those feet. I thought I was getting pretty good feet. But when my knowledge increased and I started understanding the true foot of the horse, I would look at those pictures and, and I could just see how far off my thinking was. Okay, so I saw where I, w I had been blind before because I didn't know what was true. Now, I heard a man tell a story one time that... Um, when they used to be, I, I'm sure they have more technical ways of doing it now, but it used to be, before we had all this technology, that um, they would train people how to spot counterfeit money. Now, the way that they would train them was they wouldn't take them in and show them all the counterfeits, you know, and get them to study that. They would show them the original and the true, and they would come to know what was true, right, correct, genuine, so well that then when a counterfeit came along, well, they'd just be able to spot it, see? And so that is what we want to do uh, with the horse's foot. Okay, now, one of the reasons I have this boot, I want you to imagine something. You're going to have to use your imagination in this class a little bit. Um, I want you to imagine that, okay, you know that this is just your shoe or your boot, right? And it fits on your foot. This is not your foot, but your foot fits inside this, and this protects your foot, all right? Well, it is no different for the horse, all right? What you see here is not his foot. This is just like this boot. The difference being that for you, people make your shoes, or you could even make your own if you had the skill, all right? But for the horse, his boot, his shoe is attached to his foot. For you, um, if you wear this boot enough, eventually it's going to wear out, and you're going to have to go buy another pair, all right? But for the horse, he... Uh, his foot continually grows so that as he wears it down, um, it's trimmed off. And when this process doesn't go right, that's when the walls grow long, get leverage that pull it all out of shape and things like that. And it forms into something that is not true to what is inside of it, which is the horse horse's foot just like inside this boot if you were to put it on your foot would be inside this boot now I want you to imagine that you're born with a set of boots that are permanently attached from and grow to your foot grow from your foot and are attached to your foot and you don't have any hands so you can't trim your feet. Ideally, if you get enough movement, you're going to keep your ever-growing boot worn down to where things don't get out of shape, okay? If you get too much movement, it might wear it way down to where you'd have to stop for a while and let it grow, okay? So imagine that. Imagine what could happen if the growth of your shoe exceeded, uh, exceeded the wear, Okay, what kind of leverages might you start getting on the growth of this thing that would just stretch it all out of shape? 
see? So this is what is going on with the horse, see? This is how you have to think of it. Now, this is not your foot. This is just the covering, okay? Just like this is not the horse's foot. What's the horse's foot is on the inside of here. And so this should fit what's on the inside. So the better you know what's on the inside of the foot, the better you will recognize when there is distortions and deformations in what's growing from it, because that is what causes pain. That is what causes the horse problems. So even though we are dealing with this here, the hoof capsule, trying to help the horse maintain it according to the shape of his internal foot, we're only going to do as good a job as what we know about the internal foot. Now, this is the internal foot. It's kind of an old one. It's kind of shriveled up right here. But this is what, this is the shape you are trying to trim to in every respect. I mean, there is a certain angle here. There is a certain uh, shape around the toe here, say. And once you understand the principles of how the wall grows from here, you'll be able to, when in your trimming, make sure that, that your walls are formed to fit the foot. Because anywhere where the wall gets longer than it's supposed to be, that creates a leverage point which will pull out the hoof wall and distort the shape of the foot. But it's very hard to tell. Um, when you don't really understand the shape, the dynamics, the measurements of this internal foot, See, by the time you're looking at this, okay, if it's off even a fourth of an inch over here, it can create a leverage which will pull the wall out, raise the internal foot, and then the sole will stretch forward and cover up that distortion. So you can trim and trim and trim. You think you're doing it right because the foot looks good. But in truth, you can have all kinds of small distortions here in the wall, or large ones, that are going to prevent you from ever getting that horse's foot right. And these things will cause pain on the internal foot, because even though this has no feeling, right here, really, this, whenever it is pulled or or Anything in the hoof capsule is pulling or out of shape causes pain on this internal foot. Now, we're going to go through just the names of the parts of the foot right now. Okay, now right here, you have what is called the lamina, which runs down the hoof wall. You see that there? That's the lamina. This is the coronary band. See that, how it's round? Now the hoof wall begins and grows down from there, and it starts here, right here. Where am I here? At your bar, it comes up to here and travels around the foot, like so, over to here and back down under the bar, right here. That is your coronary band. Again, that's where your hoof wall grows down from. Now, under here, what you will have, this is the, where the sole grows from. This is called the sole corium. Okay? And it'll have little papillae that feed the sole. And the sole itself, unlike the hoof wall here, it only grows to a certain thickness. And then it dies and it's able to be exfoliated. Whereas the wall that grows down from the coronary band here, it can grow forever. That's why you need to trim it off. That's why the wall grows past the sole. See here how that has grown past the sole? 
Okay, now here you have the frog, which you would call the frog corium, from which your frog grows, right in here. Now, you notice how, what a smooth transition that goes from being uh, the coronary band that grows the hoof wall into the frog corium that grows your frog. All of these parts together give us the true shape and form of the internal foot, which is the true foot of the horse to which the capsule must conform. Now here's the coffin bone. Now one thing you need to realize here is that this bone is not your foot. And one big mistake that men have made over the centuries is separating the rest of the foot from the coffin bone and then drawing conclusions about the horse's foot. Uh, like, for instance, they draw conclusions about what the angle of the wall should be, okay? And uh, then they write these conclusions in books, and then everybody tries to force the horse's foot to have that wall angle right there. But what you'll find out on these feet is that when the rest of the foot is connected to it, which would be up here you have what's called uh, the collateral cartilages. You can It's a lateral cartilage. Well, that would be, like, one would be a lateral cartilage, one would be a medial car cartilage, actually. So, but they're called collateral cartilages right here. And this cartilage comes up at the back of the foot, um, goes into half the bulb, and then ends back here. And your heel here is full of cartilage. It It is not solid. When you look at, a lot of people, when they look at a coffin bone like this, they think that this is the heel. Well, they think this is what's called the seat of the corn in their soul. See that? See how that's shaped? Okay, so when they're looking at a foot here, they think their coffin bone is ending right here. But that's not true. Right here is cartilage. Your coffin bone ends about here. So your heels are cartilage. Now look here. I've cut... Well, well, through the end of that heel. See this? Okay, you can cut up to here and it's bone. But once you get back into the heel, let's see, back here, that is all cartilage. In fact, this whole area of the foot. Now, this foot is dried up. But this whole back area of the foot here, it, attached together, is very movable. Which I don't have a live one right here, but I'll show you. Just a second here. Try getting something. All right, I didn't, didn't want to make a mess. And what I have here is the rest of the foot. I would say that's a sizable amount, wouldn't you? And all this is soft. So, you know, a lot of times when we're looking at this foot here, we're thinking of the whole thing as being solid and hard. Well, that's just not true. What covers it is solid, but what's inside the whole rear of this foot, under into here, is all soft and movable cartilage and where the digital cushion is what's called the digital cushion which is under the frog here and extends into half the bulb okay that is very soft and fatty so but technically most people think of the foot as just being totally hard like this dried up one here okay we're going to take this out of here Okay, so we're going to take this out of here. Eh, don't want to come out. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's pickled now. I've got it in vinegar. Okay. This is the rest of your foot here. Now it's a little shrinking up there. Okay, right there. See, that's your frog corium. Where is that? 
Okay, on this foot, it's all hardened. Because I left this one out to dry. All right. But on this, there's your frog corium. Here's your heels right here. Here. Here's your heels right there. There's your heels. Okay, see how it's cartilage? Now, this is going to tell you why heels contract. When things get go uh, get wrong in the back of this foot, like, say, your frog withers away, um, and there's no uh, ground contact with the back of the foot, this whole back of the foot just squeezes together. See how easy that squeezes together? That's the back of your horse's foot. Now, when you have this, let's see if I can do this right, on a coffin bone, let's see, am I putting that on right? Yeah, hold on, I'm going to put it on a bone here. Anyway, when you have this on the coffin bone, here, you see how much of your foot is movable and not solid. Okay, now this right here is part of the sole corium that goes around the edge of the foot here. Look how thick it is. And it's got different thicknesses as it goes around the foot. Like right here in the quarter, you're going to find that it's even thicker. And it's kind of like a, a gel pad surrounding the rim of the coffin bone and from which the toe stay, what I call the toe stay, grows. But the thing that men have done in stupidity is they remove this whole part of the foot. Okay. Let's see. Get you a good view of that. And then they take this thing here and they study it. You know, they slap it down on a table. Okay, there's a big thing. Didn't start with Strasser, but uh, she she promoted it to where everybody's doing it and believing it and writing it on their websites and putting it in their books and everything else. And so what she did was she took a couple of bare coffin bones. This is a back coffin bone, by the way. She threw them on a table. She measured the dorsal wall angle here, and she measured where the hairline would be, and she found that the dorsal wall angle on a front foot was 45 degrees, and the hairline, just measuring a bone, would seem to be 30 degrees. And then that was for a front foot. Then for a back foot, she measured it. She found that the dorsal wall here, this is the dorsal wall, the front here. See the angle? This would be the angle. She measured that and found that it was, uh, what was it? What did I say? The front one? Okay, the back one was 55 degrees and the hairline 30 degrees. And then, just a minute here. Then she put it in a book, which she sold for $800. So you could buy one if you want. And uh, she told everybody they needed to trim the angles of these hooves so that they were, let's see, so that they were those angles. And so, and then you have people selling these little things to people, and you have people trimming their feet by this. And what they're actually doing is they're trimming the heels right out of their horse. And, in fact, they're, you, what you're going to find is when you do it, it scorched the foot right out the back. Okay, so here's the thing. Again, is this the foot? That's not the foot, is it? What is the foot? Well, let's get this up here. Okay, here's the foot. All right. You say that this fits on here like so. It has to have all this other stuff on it. And when you get a fresh foot and you take a capsule off of it, what you're going to find when you lift it up is that the frog sticks out beneath. See right here, the frog on the back of the oh, on the back of the foot sticks below the the rim right here, which takes this from being flat like so when all this other stuff is connected on it, 
to raising it slightly. Where is it? Like that. Okay, and that's because the sole corium is attached to around the rim here. And the sole corium here is actually even thicker right here than it is in the toe. It gets a lot thicker right in here as it comes back into the heel of the rest of the foot. So even though you can take one of these bones, flop it down like that, and uh, measure the angles, you're not getting the true angle of the foot because you've removed over half the foot. And here's the thing. These these people, this has been going on for a long time. There's another older book or some guy come up with the stupid idea. And these are people that had training, like in vet schools and stuff. So you think they would be smarter, and you you know, but they're not. And so... You know, without the whole foot, uh, you can't come to an accurate estimation of what the angle of the hairline should be and the angle of the dorsal wall. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you have held to the belief that this translates into barefoot trimming as uh, a horse's coffin bone should be ground parallel. All right, see, because see how right here the coffin bone is now ground parallel, right? Well, that's what they're trying to achieve because when you take it off the foot and you set it down flat and you're thinking in your mind, well, that ought to be flat, and you measure these angles, okay, this translates to ground parallel coffin bone. But when you add the rest of the foot, you find that it's not ground parallel, that the coffin bone actually tips up slightly like so. Okay, so if you have been in this a while and you have read uh, these websites and everything else that tell you a coffin bone should be ground parallel, you need to do some thinking on this, okay, and realize that that's a lie. And if you've been trying to trim your horse to have, like in the front, a 45-degree dorsal wall angle with a 30-degree hair, hairline, okay, you've been trimming your horse out of his feet is what you've been doing. And, and as we continue on in this class to look at the structure of this internal foot, you're going to see that. Now, obviously, what I do with it? Obviously, I got this thing for a reason that I made. And that is because, for a short period of time, I followed that theory. And basically, started trimming my horse's feet. This was quite, quite, quite a while ago. And I never did it for very long. There was just something I just, I don't know if I was lazy or what. But anyway, probably because I kept losing this thing. Okay, I'm not that organized. So, but anyway, I did use it for a while. Now, I've got different measurements on it now, along with the one she has, because I've been experimenting around with that, this little thing. But uh, coffin bones are not ground parallel. Until you get that out of your thinking, you, you'll never trim your horse right. You'll never understand the mechanics of the foot. You'll never see the foot beyond being, being this bone here. Here is the rest of the foot. See, that's a lot. Is not that correct? All right.